Okay, so this is going to be a, a fairly quick video. I know last week or two weeks ago we talked about setting up your renders for a nice clean kind of polished render. Uh, right now I want to talk about a few different renders that you can do to show off your modeling. Uh, these are these don't require materials. So they're actually going to kind of apply their own materials. Um, so we're going to do a wireframe render. We're going to do a clay render. Uh, and then we're also, I'm going to show you how to do a ambient occlusion uh, render as well that we will use in the next video, in the next segment, um, as we move into Photoshop and do some finishing on our renders. So first, let's start with wireframe. Uh, and why would you want to do a wireframe? Well, it shows off the geometry, it shows off the edge flow, which I potentially could have picked a, a slightly better model than this one uh, for it, but whatever. Uh, so the way that this works, and it's, uh, again, pretty simple to do, you open up your render settings, and in the sampling, I'm using RenderMan, in the sampling tab, I've got the uh, integrator section. You change that from default to path tracer. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's not path tracer. It's visualizer. So integrator, visualizer, choose your uh, style, make sure wireframe is checked, really that's the, that's the big thing, and then you hit render. This is what you get. So it renders all of the edges in your model. Now you'll notice I've got my um, smooth preview on, but it's not rendering all of the smooth preview edges, it's just rendering the actual edges that are there that I, I model with. So. Uh, it's really that simple to do a wireframe render. Now this will turn everything in your scene to wireframe. So if you want to selectively do wireframe, you got to go about it in a different way, which I'm not going to cover. Um, this is how you would do it here. Now you'll notice uh, this also gives me a bunch of kind of unsightly lines along the backdrop. So for a wireframe render, probably what I would do with the backdrop is go, instead of doing this, uh, the curved kind of infinity psych, uh, I would just do like two planes and I, then I would only have one line at the bottom for the horizon. Uh, that's the, the super basics of the wireframe render. You can also choo uh, choose the color of your wireframe. So if I wanted to, I don't know, for some reason do like a deep blue, I could. Maybe something like that. Uh, you can also change the width of the lines and you can change the opacity. Okay, make all those changes, hit render again. Yeah, this it takes about a minute to render, and you can see the results. If you go, if the lines are too thick, and they're too close together, then it just looks blue, and that's not very good. So, um, yeah, by default, the opacity is 0.5, and the width is one. You can, you can bump that opacity up, I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, but that's all it takes. Play around with the style of the wireframe. Let me, uh, I'm going to open up the, an IPR render instead. Go away. You, go away. Or don't. Fine. Um, yeah, okay, so there's IPR. Now let's try flat. HDF. Okay, this BXDF will give a different color to each object. So if you need to tell objects apart, this isn't something that I would present as a, you know, look how good my modeling is. This is just because it's ugly. Um, I would go with probably the, the kind of the white monochrome. Um, but you've got a few different options. We don't have a matte cat material. ST, I don't know what ST stands for. Um, but it looks cool. But again, I wouldn't present that. Uh, you can just keep it at. That's weird. Uh, keep it a flat and you get a nice clean render. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one is going to be a clay render. Uh, actually, no, before I do the clay render, because that's going to be a slightly different process, I'm going to do the ambient occlusion uh, render. So it's. Basically, in the same menu, 
render settings, sampling, integrator, and we're changing from visualizer to occlusion. Okay, and then I've got IPR on. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see what it does. The lines go away, and we just have this black and white and shadowed pass. And so what this is doing is it's just rendering kind of the ambient shadows. It's not based on the light that's in your scene. Okay, if you added lights, this isn't going to take that into effect. It's just basically it's it's sending light rays out from every point on the surface, or not light rays, but rays out from every point on all of the surfaces. And when those rays hit something close, it makes it darker. So you see like right here under the arms, if it's sending a ray out from the, the side of the box to under the arm, that's hitting really quickly, so it's gonna make that darker. Whereas the top of the helmet, it's sending a light ray out straight up and it's not hitting anything, so it's gonna be brighter. That's how it works. Don't worry too much about that. Just know that this is how you get the shadow pass. And so what we'll do in a little bit is we'll take the shadow pass, we'll overlay it on top of our finished renders, and this will just help kind of give a little bit more depth uh, to our renders. So that's ambient inclusion. Uh, again, you've got some options here. So if you need to adjust uh, the number of samples or kind of the spread, um, you can also, let's see, I think it's distance. Yeah, as you adjust the distance, you'll get different, you know, how far something has to go to be dark or, or light. Kind of see the options there. I just keep it at the default. It works fine for me. Um, should probably be fine for you as well. So uh, that's ambient occlusion. And again, these renders are really quick to do, um, much faster than your full textured renders because you're not rendering textures. Uh, the last one that I want to cover is a clay render. And so the clay render is going to look kind of similar to the ambient occlusion but it actually uses a material and it does use the light, your lights in the scene, not just kind of, you know, whatever environment. Um, and so the way that I do this for sake of ease, I'm going to actually just save a different version of this. I'm going to say 04 render underscore clay. Click save as. Click continue. Then I'm going to go to my RenderMan preset browser, and I'm going to find, that's actually not in the preset browser. Uh, if I just right click and assign new material, go to my RenderMan materials, and the, I believe it's in Legacy, and it's the Disney, the Pixar Disney material. I can go to my Hypershade, and in the presets, oops, in the presets, we have a clay material and click replace. Okay. And once I have that, I can select everything. Okay, I'm going to jump out to a different view here because my mouse doesn't want to select everything. Okay, well, we'll do this the hard way. I was looking for a material override function in RenderMan. I did not find it. If somebody knows of one, I would love to hear it because that's a much simpler way to do this, but I did not see that functionality in RenderMan. It might be something you have to do through um, scripting. I'm not sure. But basically, you just apply this clay material to everything, which is, I believe it should be that one. Yep, OK, there we go. Set that back to there. Uh, let me actually just open up my outliner so I can see things a little bit better. Where is my outliner? There it is. Okay, so I can select everything in here. And, whoops. So an existing material. Select all of my rivets. Toggles, arm, legs. Just want to make sure that I get everything. I should name that clay material, but I didn't. 
I don't want to. I don't want the psych, the, my my backdrop to be uh, clay. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't know what plane this is. I'm gonna ignore that. I don't know what that is. Yep. Okay. So now that I have everything set up as my clay texture, I'm gonna go back to my camera and I'm going to hit render. And then I'm going to find my window. And it doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? Invalid light handle. Aha. Uh. Uh -huh. Yes, that is exactly what I didn't do. I'm still on occlusion. Don't save. Okay, back to render settings. Go back to default. Now I hit render. And there we go. And whoa. That uh, is a little bit overlit, I would say. So I'm going to find my clay material. Yeah, I think it's just a little too dark. You know, I can, I can adjust these settings. And it doesn't have to be an actual clay preset. I like it because it's got some nice subsurface to it. You know, it, it can show details nicely. Uh, the subsurface is probably a little bit extreme here. Let me open up an IPR render. Um, but this is, is another way that you can... Uh, kind of show off your modeling. And this is, a, again, focused on the modeling and not the materials and textures. So um, this is a great way, especially, you know, if you've got some really nice details, get the camera in close, give it a clay render, and let people just kind of admire the surface, especially if you've got, like, compound curves. You know, if you're doing, like, a, a car that has a lot of compound curves going on, showing off how smooth you can get them, um, this is a great way to do that. And once you do adjust all of those settings, uh, let me find my window here. I just have too many things going on. There we go. Here we go. And okay. I mean that's that's the the finished render. I don't have a whole lot of saturation in there. Again, you can overlay the clay render with your ambient occlusion if you want to kind of accentuate that a little bit more. Um, but it's just a nice clean way to show showcase the model. Um, so those are the three renders. Again, all pretty simple to do. They all render much quicker than the full textured. Um, and it's good to have that as a way to show off your models.